Hey everyone, welcome. It was back in 2022 when Continental would put up this big mama tent at the trade shows promoting their new tires. Now, I got all excited thinking that it's gonna be a relaunch of their line of tires similar to what Schwalbe did with Attics. Instead, it was the equivalent of DHR, DHF, which is this, four new tires, three new compounds, a complete new gravity-oriented line of tires. I have one of their more versatile tires with me today, so why don't we take a look at this and see what it is about. Continental is the third largest tire company in the world, and you know they put quite a bit of money into this launch. I mean, look at this box. It's definitely unique and it will draw your attention. However, if you are like me and you are used to the black chili compound, probably made in Germany, the old standards of their marketing, you'll be quite confused when you come to these tires because they don't use any of those terms. However, this is one of those classics, don't throw away the package because everything you need is here on the back. And you can see the four new names of tires that are designed for specific terrain from mud to loose to mixed to hard pack. And then you see the three compounds from endurance to super soft. You see the three casings from trail to downhill. And finally, the recommended disciplines for this line of tires, trail, enduro, and again, downhill. Knowing all that, if you look at their terrain versus casing table, they call it the gravity periodic table, you will start to understand what kind of tires are available for what kind of terrain. What I have in my hands is a Crip Total FR, which is a front dedicated tire. And if you look here on the sidewall, you're gonna recognize that this is for trail. It does use the endurance compound and it has the lightest casing of them all making it a good option for trail riding. This thread pattern is considered to be for mixed terrain. And before I install it on a wheel, let me put it on the scale and see if it comes close to that 1,040 grams that's supposed to be. And I have two of these 29ers 2.4s. The first one comes up to 1,065 grams. And here's the second right at 1,040 grams. So very close to the stated weight of 1040. And as I'm looking at these, I noticed here all the markings on the sidewall. You can see 60, so that's the width or the expected width of the tire. 29er, 2.4. And you're gonna have rotational arrow. This is very tiny and hard to see. It's pretty obvious though that this is a directional tire. Here's where that information is on the tire. You see that interesting pattern on the sidewall, they even talk about it in their marketing. This is very similar to like a EXO sidewall. And yes, indeed, you are going to get the Continental logo here on the sidewall as well. I tried to inflate the tire with a floor pump, but I failed, so I had to use the compressor just to pop the bead. And I'm planning to use this with the trucker sealant. It worked very well for us over the winter last year. I had the tire inflated to about 40, 45 PSI just to have it properly seated. Now it's down to 25 PSI. Let's take a look at the measurements of this. Tires seem to be well constructed and you can look at the casing which is nice and round. On this DHF like tire you can also see that channel right there, the cornering channel side to side. You can see pretty much two types of knobbies here in two rows. Again, this looks very similar to a DHF, some might say Asagai. You have a ramped up leading edge here for better rolling resistance, and you have a lot of braking surfaces overall. Nice and big cornering knobs. Look at how tall these are. And overall, this endurance compound, so the rubber, seems to be quite soft. These are installed on a 27 and millimeter ID rim and the height of the rim is 20 millimeters. And that means that the tires are about 56 millimeter tall. And that was to the top of these center rolling knobs. The height of these knobs is close to five millimeters, so fairly tall. Compared to that, the cornering knobs are even taller. They come up close to what 6.5 millimeters. So pretty tall with a nice wide base. If you look carefully, you're gonna see 
that they are pretty much in line with the casing, which is supposed to be 60 millimeters. And here it is pretty much 60. So overall a nice volume tire is refreshing to see a company that actually states the exact dimensions of their tires, including the weight. Do you guys have any experience riding these new Continental Gravity tires? I would love to hear your opinion in the comments. In our case, we didn't ride a lot on these tires. However, the little riding that we did turned out to be really good. Good grip overall, both cornering and braking grip, despite the fact that these are front tires, both of them. And just like you would read in pretty much every review, the rolling resistance of these tires is fairly low, definitely in this endurance rubber compound, which is their hardest. I know this line of tire is supposed to compete with the DHF and DHRs of the world. We're not really using them that way. We're using them as off-season burlier tires. And for that purpose, I think they're gonna serve us well. I'm looking forward again to you guys that have had any experience with the new Contis just to give us your impressions. Otherwise, if we didn't win these at one of the races in 2023, I don't know if I would have bought it only because they're quite expensive in Canada still. And to be honest with you, if I was looking just for a beater bike tire, I would have gone with the Delium tires again. I have reviewed the Delium tires for you folks uh, early in 2022, I believe. So what do you guys think? Do you have any questions for me? Do you like these Conti tires? Are you using them today? Let us know in the comments below. Uh, let me know if you liked the video. If you did, don't forget to like, subscribe and comment. And until next time, Hope to see you folks on the trails. Cheers guys, cheers.